So we have looked at a little bit, anyway, of what a tone is, that it is something, at least what we hear is air vibrating at a steady, steady number of vibrations per second or cycles per second are two terms that are often used. Uh, engineering is more interested in that sort of thing uh, than musicians per se. We generally refer to sounds by a letter name that we have given them. Uh, but it's important to understand that basically we hear a steady tone with the ear as a listening device or as a detecting device. We begin to hear a steady tone when something is vibrating at 20 times per second or more. Slower than 20 times a second, there's enough time in between each of the individual vibrations for us to detect a space in time. So we hear the individual vibrations. And when they are so close in time as to be 20 times per second or more, uh, the ear cannot hear that space, and we just hear what we call a steady tone. Right? And the ear can hear from 20 to approximately 20,000 times uh, a second, which is a very wide range of hearing, obviously. So there are many different frequencies. Do the math, right? We, uh, we don't use all of them. Uh, what we do in our way of uh, thinking about music, basically, is that we we divide the sounds up across that spectrum of from 20 to 20,000 into what we call intervals or distances between sounds or notes. If we ultimately we call them notes because we refer to the sound by the the letter name that we give it and uh, the symbol that is used on paper to represent that sound. So, the distance between two notes is what we call an interval. <clears throat> and in our way of doing music, once again, this is not, not the way it's done everywhere in the world, but in the Western world, the way we do music uh, in the tonal world, we say that the smallest distance between any two notes is going to be something that we call a half step. And <clears throat> for now, we're simply going to define that as the smallest interval that there is, that there's a half step. And there's no, no smaller increment or decrement of pitch than a half step. And then the next largest interval is two of those, which makes something that we call a whole step. So to keep track of all of this, as I said before, we use letter names, right? We use the first seven letters of the alphabet from A to G, right? And we give each one of those designations, a, a sound gives the name, right? A, and the lowest sound that we have basically on, the, on a piano, for instance, all the way to the left, to the left, actually. Um, a, right? First note, A. Makes sense, our alphabet begins with A, our first note begins with A. And that one vibrates very slowly, it's about 27.5 uh, times a second. Uh, it's not a sound that we hear very often. Uh, usually we, we play sounds that are higher up in the audio spectrum, they're easier to hear uh, for the ear. Okay, so we have A. And then we would go from A, we have seven different designations basically and A through G is what that is and there's a whole step between all pairs of notes with two exceptions from B to C is a half step and from E to F is a half step those are the letter names of notes right? well if we use seven letters and we make a set of notes that starts with a particular letter, let's say it's A, right? And we go consecutively, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, until we hit A again. This gives us the seven letters plus the other A, total of eight notes. This is a very important interval. This is an interval that we call an octave. 
And at this point, everything cyclically begins to repeat itself again. In other words, after A would come another B, and a C, and a D, etc. For as far as the year can hear, right? From 20, uh, roughly 20,000, although as you get older, you lose the top end of it, it comes down to about 17,000 or so. Still very high frequencies. The ear can hear a very, very wide range of sounds all through your life, pretty much. Uh, youngsters hear better. As we get older, the hearing uh, deteriorates a little bit, but not so much that we don't really hear the full spectrum of sound. Okay, so we have these intervals, whole step and half step, and the letters are arranged the way I mentioned a moment ago. That smallest interval, the half step, if we were to really look carefully at everything here, all those places where there's a whole step between two letters, we're going to have a total of, if we count them, 12 half steps from one letter to the next instance of that letter again, regardless of which letter it is. So we have to name all of them. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G doesn't really get the job done. There's only seven designations there, and we discovered that, in fact, there are 12 half steps in these two points between the beginning and the end of an octave, which is sort of a little microcosm, a little picture of the entire system. Well, we find that because music and sound to the ear appears to go up and down in pitch, that we're going to need designations that uh, give us those directional implications. So between A and B, for instance, the first place where it's a whole step from one note to the next, there is a sound in between them, since we divide things down to the half step, that is a half step higher than A, and at the same time, a half step lower than B. It's a special sound, we call it an enharmonic tone, and it has two possible names. We use the term sharp, which is the pound sign that you've seen on a, a computer keyboard or a telephone keyboard. Pound sign is the sharp, and that raises a note or a sound by one half step. Its counterpart, the flat, which looks like a B with the bottom angled up, like the letter B uh, with, the, with the bottom angled up slightly, that lowers a note by a half step. So this, the sound in between A and B could be thought of as either A sharp or B flat. And for the moment, we're going to think about that uh, in directional terms. Or if, if the sounds are ascending, if you're thinking from a low sound moving up to a higher sound, we'll use sharp notes and on the way back down, descending, we will think of the flat sounds. Let's fill in all the blanks here from A to A, so we get the whole picture. That would do this. We go from A to A sharp to B to C. There is no B sharp. C to C sharp to D to D sharp to E to F. Again, there's no E sharp. F is followed by F sharp, then G, and then G sharp, and then we come to A again, and we find that there are, in fact, 12 half steps, right? A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, G, G sharp, and then we get to A again, we find that it's 12 half steps within one octave. So that's really the master set of notes, those 12, 12 notes. And when we go from one note to the next by half steps, we have a special word for that. We call that moving chromatically. Okay. So chromatic motion is moving by half steps. Moving by half steps. There are larger intervals, of course, than the half step and the whole step. And as we look at the way we arrange letter names into 
sets of notes that we call scale